like what you see here? Then be sure to subscribe to Jaguar Gator 8, a channel devoted to the history of college football. New videos drop twice a week. Click the card in the upper right corner or the link in the description to subscribe now. And now, on with our feature presentation. There is an old saying that honesty is the best policy. In short, if you do something, own up to it and admit it. Eventually, especially if you're a pro baseball player, with media hounding you at every waking moment and surrounding you at every turn to try and get a story out, the truth is going to come out one way or another. So you might as well reveal it and get out in front of it, rather than concealing the information or fabricating the story and letting everyone believe your lie and play your game. If you tell a lie and it gets out, you lose the trust of your teammates. You lose the trust of those around you, and you just look like an absolute idiot in the eyes of everyone. Especially when law enforcement is involved, and when the police have to get involved in the matter. Making this incredibly public information that takes no effort whatsoever to look up. With that in mind, let's meet this man right here. Dan Maselli. Because he might hold the distinction, in the over 30 year history of the Marlins franchise, of being the dumbest player to ever step foot on the mound for them. Maselli was not on the team for very long, only lasting with Florida for a season and a half, hence why there's not exactly a lot of footage available of him with the Marlins, as will become incredibly apparent throughout this video. However, he always made his presence known. You couldn't forget that he was on the Marlins, especially in 2001 when his public comments putting manager John Bowles on blast were considered to be one of the main reasons why Bowles was fired. And you couldn't forget that he was acquired by the Marlins to start off the 2000 season because of the absolutely insane way that he introduced himself to the team when he got off on just about the worst foot possible with everyone with an absolutely insane lie that tanked his credibility and career forever. Because this is the crazy story behind Dan Maselli, and the lie that made him, quite possibly, the dumbest pitcher in Marlins history. Before I talk about what exactly Maselli did, both what he actually did and what he didn't do, we need some context to understand just who Dan Maselli is, and how he was acquired by the team in the first place. In 1999, the Marlins were not a good team as they had fallen on hard times from their infamous fire sale after winning the World Series just two years before, finishing the season 64-98. and And a big reason why the Marlins were so bad in 1999 was because their bullpen when it came to setting up their closers was atrocious. If they got to the ninth inning, they were fine. Antonio Alfonseca was 21 for 23 in save opportunities once he assumed the closer role and would take another step forward by leading the NL in saves in 2000. So they were all good there. But the setup rules? Not so much. There were 15 games during the season where the Marlins either lost the lead or fell behind in the 8th inning. Just to give you an idea of how bad they were, here's a look at their ERA by inning. Remember, the higher the bar, the worse it is. And the two highest bars come from the 7th inning, with a 6.67 ERA, and the 8th inning, with a 5.54 ERA. Whether you had Braden Looper, Brian Edmondson, or anyone else in that setup role, the end result was usually a disaster. So they needed a setup guy badly. And it seemed like Dan Maselli was the perfect fit, as in the offseason, GM Dave Dombrowski traded right-handed pitcher Brian Meadows to the San Diego Padres for Maselli. As Dombrowski said on the move, it could be a situation where even though you move a starter, your starting pitching might get better. We lost a lot of leads in the eighth inning last year. So if your starter can get you a lead after five or six innings and your bullpen can hold it, that helps. Maselli is a bulldog type of guy. He's had that reputation for years. Maselli is really paid for that setup role in today's game and it made complete sense as to why the Marlins wanted to acquire the 29-year-old pitcher from the Padres, seeing as this was the setup man 
who one year before in 1998 pitched in 67 games with a 3-2-2 ERA and played a big part in helping the Padres reach the World Series, especially over the second half of the season, where in 31 games and 30 innings of work, he only allowed seven earned runs, coming out to an ERA of 210. This was the man that was going to solve Miami's setup problems and was going to be the man to protect the leads. However, even though this man was supposed to be the solution, when spring training began in 2000, it started off with a problem. Because a tragedy occurred courtesy of some drunk, vulgar lunatics that almost ended his career forever. When Maselli arrived at spring training on Monday, February 21st, he was not in great health and was not able to throw. And that's because he had five stitches on his pitching hand and two in his elbow. Now, Maselli was fine during the four-day offseason program that the Marlins had in January, so we can presume that this occurred sometime between those two incidents, probably sometime around early February. Maselli, his wife Lisa, and one of their friends went to some bar in Orlando that was never identified, but was described as a hole in the wall off of State Highway 50. They were there to celebrate the friend's birthday. The three were having a good time, enjoying each other's company, and having some drinks, when all of a sudden, four men approached Lisa and made rude, suggestive, and vulgar comments in her direction. Maselli tried to get the guys to go away and to stop, seeing as she was married, and they were making her extremely uncomfortable. But the guys wouldn't do it. They kept pestering him and his wife, and even went as far as escalating the incident into an all-out fight outside the bar. Here was Maselli, just trying to protect his wife from some rude, highly inappropriate and offensive men. And these men came looking for nothing but trouble, looking to pick a fight. Maselli obviously didn't want to get into a fight, but the men started going after him, punching him and attacking him. While Lisa was terrified, Maselli was stuck fighting all four of these men by himself. And the crazy part about all of this, Maselli was actually winning the fight. Or at least, he was when they were just throwing punches. But then, one of the idiot guys decided to pull out a knife, flailing it at Maselli and stabbing him in the hand in the process. Once the police car arrived, the four men ran off. And after the police spoke with witnesses and the bartender, they spoke with Maselli, who declined to press charges because he didn't want to deal with the distraction going into the season and didn't want to deal with the headache of an investigation and a legal proceeding. But just like that, Maselli was out for a while. He needed stitches, couldn't throw to start off spring training, and was lucky that he didn't suffer further injuries or even die in the process. Since all bets are off, when you have a drunk guy with a knife who's looking for a fight. As Maselli said, I acted like an idiot. I'm a little embarrassed about it. I could have been out for the year, or my career. It was childish stuff. They were a bunch of drunks, and I had a couple of beers myself. A couple of them would swing, then hop off, and a couple more got in it. I guess one of them thought he needed a knife. The Marlins were stunned by the news, with GM Dave Dombrowski saying, You never want to hear news like that. It's unfortunate that it took place, but fortunate he didn't get hurt worse than he did. Owner John Henry was mortified when he heard the details, saying, Oh my god. Yeah, I heard he got in cut, but I thought it was his own knife. So he's okay? Asking the reporter in a moment of panic if he was going to make it. However, this was a remarkable story on so many levels. First off, the fact that Maselli fought off all four guys by himself, even though one of them had a knife. Now, Maselli had some fighting experience, as he used to do karate back in the day. But still, to fight off four guys is impressive, especially since the security at the bar was useless. Manager John Bowles even acknowledged that, saying, Now when we get into a brawl, we'll know who to stand behind. Second, the fact that Maselli stood up for his wife 
and did everything in his power to not make her feel uncomfortable anymore by those four drunken idiots. He was willing to put his entire career on the line to protect his wife. So did this incident stink? Yes. Did it have to get to this point? Maybe not. I wasn't there. So who is to say whether there was any way for Maselli to de-escalate the situation and prevent the idiots from throwing punches? Although I'm guessing there was some way, seeing as Lisa said afterwards that next time, they should just get up and walk out the back door. But it was truly a heroic act. An incredible display of the love that he had for his wife, and an incredible display of his strength. That is, if any of what I just said was true. Because turns out, that story that I just talked about for the last four minutes, completely made up. There was no bar fight. There was no drunken idiot with a knife. In 2000 country terms, there was no Arizona. No painted desert, no Sedona. Everything was a lie. Turns out, he got stitches from getting into a fight with his brother. Seriously. Want to know why there was no police report filed? Because there was no reason to have the police come. Because this didn't happen. Want to know why the security guard at the bar did nothing? Even though that's his job? Because this didn't happen. Want to know how a drunk is able to fend off four drunks when one of them has a knife? Because, shocker, this didn't happen. What actually happened was that Maselli fought his brother, Witcher. The police came to his house at 4.30 in the morning, reporting a domestic disturbance, and Dan, in an act of self-defense, swung at his brother and then chased him around the room until his mom put a stop to it. As an officer said, I was reading the newspaper Tuesday morning, and I said, that's not the report I got. Blood was scattered throughout the kitchen floor. Now, to be fair to Dan, he was supposedly not the primary aggressor in this, as it was Richard who started the fight, although Dan never elaborated on how the fight began, saying that it was a family issue. However, no knife was used. Richard said that the fight wasn't even a fight, but rather just a bear hug, and it sounded ugly and was blown out of proportion. So maybe Dan lied about that too. Who is to say? Honestly, I don't even know anymore what to believe, other than the police report, which said that Dan reeked of alcohol. And when the stories didn't add up at all, and when the holes in the bar story became more and more apparent, the team confronted Maselli about it, and Maselli admitted to fabricating the entire thing. As Dombrowski said, he felt it was a family situation, and he was embarrassed that it took place. He felt it was going to protect his family, and he basically fabricated the story. And manager John Bowles was absolutely confused about this. And while he didn't find or suspend Maselli, he ordered Maselli to apologize and to clear the air. As Bowles said on why he did this, we said, okay, listen, the first version wasn't accurate. And now you need to sit down with people and explain what happened. He said to us he didn't know anybody in the organization, didn't want to come into his first spring training with the team this way, and he didn't want to cast any dispersion on his family. He was protecting his family. I'm embarrassed for him that it came to this. It's important that a person confide in you and trust you and coming over cold, he didn't know anybody. But here's what makes no sense about this. I get to some extent not saying that he got into a fight with his brother and protecting the family name that way. So why not create a lie that doesn't lead people to think twice about it and poke holes in the story? If you say you were unpacking groceries and accidentally slammed the car door on your hand, no one's batting an eye. If you say you were cutting up food and your hand slipped and the knife fell or you tried to catch a knife, no one's batting an eye or doing a deeper investigation into it. But you got the police involved. You got a local bar involved in a public place where there were witnesses who clearly saw that this didn't happen and that you weren't there. You made it a life or death situation and there are police laws that describe what took place and where they took place. 
So this would have been snuffed out immediately. You had to create a story where you, being drunk, fought off four guys by yourself, including one with a knife, while security just stood there and did nothing. You got way too greedy and tried to be the hero. It's like the guy who went on the British version of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire and cheated by having an elaborate system where he would go through all the answer choices and someone in the audience would call out the right answer. If he stopped at 64,000 pounds or 125,000 pounds, no one's batting an eye. But he had to go for the million and raise suspicion that way. And sure enough, got caught because of it. So yes, I get not wanting to say that you got into a fight with your brother and tarnish the family name that way and ruin your brother's reputation since he would be in the news for this. But don't do this! Come up with literally any other lie that doesn't involve you fighting everyone off like you're in a freaking Kingsman movie! Come up with literally any other lie that doesn't have the story end like this. You guys all think I'm a hero, and I'll accept that responsibility. So let's break everything down. Don't lie. But if you're going to lie, don't make it a lie that's going to raise eyebrows, make people fear for your life, and seem a bit unrealistic. Don't make it a lie involving a large amount of people where there are witnesses and police reports. Keep the lie as small as possible to the point where there aren't any witnesses. Don't make it a lie where you're the hero to an absurdly unrealistic degree and where people want to ask tons of follow-up questions afterwards. Basically, if you're going to tell a lie, look at what Dan Maselli did, and then do literally the exact opposite. Because it's safe to say that when it came to his first impression with the Florida Marlins, Dan Maselli floundered. Get your official Jaguar Gear 9 merchandise by going to jj9shop.com and be sure to like and subscribe as it really helps the channel out a lot. Join me every Wednesday night where we'll play NFL trivia for cash prizes at 9 p.m. Eastern over on Twitch. To learn more about the history of college football, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 8. To learn more about the history of Major League Baseball, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 7. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping out the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. See how you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.